A new essential guidebook to the ancient city includes stops for grilled cheese, ski ball, and craft beer. Here to explain is Amy Angelilli, author of 100 Things to Do in St. Augustine Before You Die. Yeah. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So who is this book for? Is it for tourists or for locals? Oh, it's for everybody. The locals are buying it and checking off all the things they've already done and then making a plan to attack the things they haven't yet, you know, experienced. So, in fact, a lot of tourists in St. Augustine are locals, right? They're from Florida. They're from right. places like Jacksonville, even. Mm -hmm. So um, there's some places we all know, right? You're supposed to go to the fort when you go there. A sure. lot of people go to the lighthouse. There's certain stops that are familiar. Um, but you moved here in 2015? Yes, I did. Yeah. And so were those kind of the places you also hit naturally first? I'm always a seeker of the unknown. So I like to get, you know, off the highway and go into the back roads and, you know, go into the alleyways. When I discovered Joffrey's, a little uh, Polish Greek restaurant off the beaten path, you know, off an alleyway, off another alleyway, I knew I was onto something fun. For people who mm. want to follow your footsteps, where is Joffrey's? Oh, Joffrey's is off of Avila Street, which is the oldest uh, continuously operated road in the United States, uh, which is right off of the plaza. Okay, so that's like of, a little treasure hunt. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of your best kept secrets. Yeah. Um, are there things in this book that you discovered for the first time when you were writing it? Or were they all places that you'd been that you just wanted to tell people about? Well, I moonlight at visitstaugustine.com. So um, I have kind of an insider knowledge of what's happening that's new. And um, we have so uh, many things on, on that website that, you know, are much outside things like the fort. And so it was a nice opportunity to pull some of those things that are a little bit lesser known. So in answer to your question, I knew about all these things. Uh, but I felt like some of them were more underground, you know, experiences. Because if you're a first-time traveler to St. Augustine, there are things that you have to do. Now, I always enjoy following the Facebook groups um, when people ask, oh, I've been to St. Augustine eight, nine, ten times. What's something different that I might not know about that I can check out? And there's a lot of things in this book. But it's got that local feel because you're telling people, you know, if you want to see just a beautiful sunset, where do you go? Exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. Where do you go? Well, I go, I used to live right by Ann Cates. Okay. In and, Volano Beach. Yes. Uh-huh. In Volano. And so uh, I would walk over with the dog to see the sunset right next to there. And sometimes I'll still do that even though I live in town now. I'll drive over there and hang out with the people on their golf carts <laughs> watching oh, wow. the sunset from the boat ramp. I was just doing that about uh, 10 days ago. And uh, it, you don't even have to eat at Aunt Kate's, although I highly recommend that you do. <laughs> yeah, that's right on the intercoast. <laughs> right there, there yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of the experiences that you find most rewarding? Are they interactive experiences or things that are designed more for a solo explorer? I think it's really easy to be on your own in St. Augustine um, because there's there's so many things that are walkable, of course. And also the locals are really friendly here. You know, it's not like going to a big impersonal city. You get you get somebody um, chatting with you and you'll learn all sorts of things about them and about the town. I remember visiting for the first time and um uh, my husband at the time was working all day and I would go out myself and I would just chat people up in restaurants and at the shops. And I, I learned so many things. I didn't know a soul, you know, but I felt like by the end of the week, you know, I almost had laid the groundwork for the book without even realizing that I had. Right. <laughs> the city has changed a lot. I think from the, certainly from the, when I first started working in this market, St. John's County was tiny. St. Augustine was tiny. There's so much more tourism, so many more residents. Um, and some people in St. Augustine are like enough already with the tourism, right? They're, they, mm -hmm. they're, they're even rolling back a little bit of the Knights of Light. So how do they strike that balance? How do you think they strike that balance? I don't think we figured it out yet, actually. Um, 
I think that uh, the infrastructure is 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 really hard when it comes to things like the Knights of Lights. It wasn't the town wasn't created for that sort of situation. Yeah, it's very old, and when it celebrated its 450th anniversary a month before I moved here, that's kind of when it really yeah. blew up and yeah. uh, became kind of a international sensation. And I had told people I was moving to kind of like a tucked away, you know, sleepy place. Yeah. And within a year it had blown up. And, you know, I, I know uh, uh, some uh, locals even hesitate to spend time downtown during, you know, yeah. a season like Nights of yeah. Lights. Well, Amy Angelilli, author of A Hundred Things to Do in St. Augustine Before You Die. It's a fun book. It's a great read. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me.